Hi, I'm Dr. Caroline Leaf and welcome to this podcast. Today we're going to be talking about quantum physics. What is it? I refer a lot to quantum physics and I do because it's absolutely fantastic in helping us to understand our nature as humans and our ability to think and feel and choose specifically. So what is it? When we talk about quantum physics, we're dealing with energy. We're dealing with literally packets of energy. And we are, as humans, made up of energy. In fact, we are literally, at our core fundamental level, waves of energy. You know, like a wave, think of a wave in the the sea. We are literally waves of energy. And these waves of energy translate back up into particles and then eventually our cells and what we see as humans. So on the outside, we see the physical and right down at the depths of who we are, there are these waves. Quantum physics also shows us that as humans, we are immersed around us in, you know, we talk about the atmosphere around us and, you know, all that, that, that geography, the, when we refer to the atmosphere and so on. But we are also, we are also basically immersed in waves of energy. So we are waves of energy, each our own specific wave, and we are immersed in waves of energy. And in fact, Sir Roger Penrose is an Oxford mathematician, and he explains that these waves of energy that we are immersed in are waves of love. So they're good. They have the ethical values of love and everything that's good. And he has used quantum physics and mathematics to show that we as humans are made of waves of love energy, and we are immersed in waves of love energy. And that this energy is like wisdom. And in in this year, some Nobel Prize physicists physicists won the Nobel Prize for their research in quantum gravity, which explains the fact that we as humans are immersed in energy. And now it's not anything weird. If you think energy is something weird, well, without energy, we wouldn't exist. Energy comes from God. Energy energy comes from a source. And that's another thing quantum physics shows us is that energy, we are energy, immersed in energy. And this energy is coming from sort of some sort of supernatural force, which we as, as if you're a Christian, we believe that this is God. So God is energy and the energy keeps us alive. Without energy, you'd be dead. There wouldn't be computers. Nothing would work. So energy is not something weird. Energy is a commodity that helps us to understand the basic core of who we are. And it's something that keeps us, it's basically keeping us alive and keeping things working. So what we see is that we can actually distort this energy or we can grow this energy. And quantum physics shows us that. So the first, one of the, one of the primary laws of quantum physics is the law of entanglement. And entanglement means relationship. And basically they show that when particles are in relationship, when you put two particles into relationship, you can separate them by many, many, many miles. And if one turns one way, the other will turn another way. And what that means is that they once connected, once in relationship, always in relationship. And so if we apply that to us as humans, we are connected with the people around us. We're designed to be connected. So no matter how far away you are, we are connected, which is why forgiveness is so important and why operating in love is so important because we're actually impacting each other. As soon as you're in relationship with someone, when you're toxic and negative, you actually impact that person that you're in relationship with, even no matter how far away they are. So that's another basic law is one that I love and it's called superposition. And superposition is it's the state that particles go into before they collapse in a specific direction. The easiest way to understand this is to think of a wave. And you've all watched waves on the beach and how they build. And then they get to that point where there's almost like this moment in time where they freeze and then suddenly they just collapse on the beach or they collapse in the in area in the sea. And the point where they're building up, that superposition where particles go into a point where they, where nothing has yet happened, but something is about to happen. And it's going to be either, it's either going to collapse in one direction or the other. And this is what happens with our choices. We are in life and we get information from things happening, phone calls, emails, life, etc. And we have existing memories. And this is a building up of the wave of information, the incoming information and our existing memories. And we think about this and we're feeling it. And that's the wave building. And then suddenly we choose. And as we choose, the wave collapses. Now, according to quantum physics, as soon as the wave collapses, you make something, you turn something that is just a, like a thought. I mean, not a thought, something that's about to, that you're thinking about, that's not a reality yet, but you turn it into reality. So the wave crashing on the beach is like you, as you make the choice, what that does in your brain is it actually causes genetic expression. So as you think, feel, think and feel, you build this wave of energy through your brain. And as you choose, the wave collapses on the beach, which means that you actually cause genetic expression. 
And when you cause genetic expression, that means that you're actually going to build proteins and you're going to build the information into the proteins. So you're having an effect, you're building a thought with your thinking. So quantum physics shows us that thoughts are real things, that we create matter out of our mind, that we create the visible out of the invisible. And then those thoughts become our words and our actions. So therefore they have impact. So this concept of entanglement and superposition, which linked to choice and the effect of choice, basically can be used, we can use this Deuteronomy 3019, for example, we can link this, these two quantum principles back to a scripture. And Deuteronomy 3019 says, I lay before you life and death, blessing and cursing, choose life so that you and your descendants may live. So there we've got a labor for you, life and death. We've got this information coming in. We've got these thoughts inside of our head. We've got this way of building. We've got the fact that we are in relationship with others. We've got the fact that we get to this point where we've got to consider the incoming and upcoming existing thoughts and make choices. And as we make, and that's that superposition. And as you make a choice, we're making a choice from a multitude of possibilities, a multitude of what we would call probabilities. So in quantum physics, these choices that we are, that are this multitude of choices, we call a probability wave. So we can choose from all these probabilities, possibilities, options. And in, when we're operating in our correct nature, which is love, then all these probabilities are going to be good. But we can also distort those. So by wrong choices, when we choose death instead of life, when we choose toxic over healthy, we are actually turning a toxic probability, which is not really real yet, into an a toxic actuality or reality inside of our life. So we see through the science of quantum physics that Deuteronomy 3019 is true. The scripture is saying choose life so that you and your descendants may live, which means if you choose toxicity or death, there's going to be damage to you and your offspring and it's going to impact your life in a negative way. So obviously there's metaphorical elements in terms of the word choice and usage. We also get the scripture, capture all thoughts. Now that's a, what you don't go around like catching thoughts with your hands. You're doing that in your mind, in the energy of your mind. All these thoughts that you are thinking, this is energy and you are able with your, with your mind to capture those thoughts and go into superposition and, and decide, is this a good thought? Should I be thinking this thought? What is the impact of this thought on my health, on my family, on my work, on the next moment, the next decision, etc., etc.? These, we, the science of quantum physics explains this, this ability we have as humans to go into superposition and to choose from all these probabilities. And we don't always know exactly how things are going to pan out. In fact, we never really know how things are going to exactly pan out. So there's a level of uncertainty in our choices. But we know when we're operating in love that we know that the scripture, I know the plans I have for you to give you a hope and a future. So we know if we choose probabilities in love, we're going to be choosing good stuff. So we have that level of certainty in our, we have, we have the certainty that it will be good for us, but we're not quite sure what it looks like. So there's a level of uncertainty, but it's kind of a good uncertainty. Same thing with the toxic. We know that there's, we're not quite sure how the toxic is going to pan out, but we know it's toxic. We know it's bad. So this concept of uncertainty, which then links to faith, um, is basically also another law in quantum physics. It's basically the high, what we call Heisenberg's uncertainty principle. So that's just a few things that I want to show you about how wonderful the science of quantum physics is in helping us understand the basics about how we function as humans and the power that we have to think and to feel and to choose. So I want to close this podcast today just by reading you a quote from a Professor Henry Stapp, who's a Berkeley professor who's in his late 80s, and he is one of the greatest minds, in my opinion, of the century. And he, he talks about the fact that as humans, that we are able to make these choices and that basically our choices that we make impact reality and show that God exists literally or that Godness, loveness exists. He says, The free choices made by the human players can be seen as miniature versions of the choices that appear to be needed at the creation of the universe. Quantum theory opens the doors to, and indeed demands, the making of these latter free choices. This situation is concordant with the idea of a powerful God that creates the universe and its laws to get things started, but then bequeaths part of this power to beings created in his own image at least with regard to their power to make physically effective decisions on the basis of reasoning and evaluating.
Well, this is just a quick explanation of quantum physics. I hope it gets you excited. If you want to read more, I have lots in my books about this and I apply it on a very practical level to help you to apply these principles to improve your mental health, your well-being, your success in life. Um, it's great stuff to just help you be happier in your life and more effective. And the books that I would recommend are my latest book, Think, Learn, Succeed, and also my book, Switch on Your Brain, and my book, Perfect You. These books all deal with this principle of applying quantum physics in your life in a very practical way to really help you operate in your true potential. Thank you for joining me today. I'm Dr. Caroline Leaf. 